And one of the things that when I was, I had lunch with Linda today, when I was having lunch, uh, we were talking about it. She was saying that the shocking thing for her in that, uh, in that experience was how quickly the changing of a thought impacts the muscles or the, the entire physiology of the body. That uh, when you, when I ask her to just think of a moment in her life when she experienced shame, uh, her arm almost went limp and I said no hold it as hard as you can and she had literally no strength uh, in her there in power versus force uh, Dr. Hawkins has presented a uh, uh, a scale that I want to present to you here today and it's just an arbitrary scale it's numbers that could, these numbers could go from uh, zero to two million or they could go to zero to ten or whatever his scale goes from zero to a thousand and what it is is a scale that measures energy. Now remember, when I spoke yesterday, the idea that uh, Einstein said that nothing happens until something moves. That everything in the universe is energy. And energy is not good or bad, right or wrong, moral or immoral. Energy is fast or slow, high or low. And that our objective in understanding this and what it means to us is to be able to move to higher and higher and faster and faster energies that when a higher energy a faster energy is put into the presence or the energy field of a very low and a very slow energy that energy is nullified the lower energy and dissolved it disappears but more than it dissolving and disappearing for example uh, if you're in a room of darkness, darkness is just simply a lower and a slower energy than light. Light moves very, very fast. The absence of light shows a very slow and a very low energy. If you're in a dark room and you are about to light a candle in that dark room, you don't have to say to the darkness, you better get out of here now. You're going to have to dissolve. You're going to have to scurry because I'm about to bring some light in here. You don't have to do that. All you have to do is light a candle, turn on a light, and the darkness dissolves. The darkness disappears. But more than that, and this is really crucial for what I'm presenting here this afternoon, the darkness is converted to light. So that when you bring higher energy to the presence of lower and slower energy, energy that we call evil, energy that we call disease, uh, energy that we call depression. You are not only sending the disease and the depression and the despair away, you are converting that very energy into the higher and the faster energy that is being brought to its presence. It's um, the same thing of true of hatred. When you bring love to the presence of hatred, hatred not only dissolves, but it turns to love. When you bring higher energy, even, even in the field of medicine, we're discovering now with energy medicine that um, experimentation is being done now. Andy Weil, who I was just with the other day, uh, suggests that the medicine of the future will be energy medicine. And that medical doctors will be in medical schools will be trained in energy medicine it will be the real upcoming uh, uh, area for investigation and for research they're now doing experiments with lasers which are very 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 fast energy and they're taking tumors that are present in uh, what we call cancerous tumors and uh, even non-cancerous tumors but to growths in in the body and they're bombarding the tumor and the surrounding tissue with these extremely high fast energies and they're discovering that not only do the tumors begin to dissolve and begin to be uh, removed but the energy that was in the tumor is now joining with the higher faster laser energy and it is being converted into something that we call uh, healing or health the implications for what I'm speaking about here are absolutely astonishing for everything in your life. And what I'm about to present to you in this little paradigm in the next few moments is something that could change your life. As I said to you, if, if you don't take anything else with you that you can purchase here today, be sure to uh, commit yourself to reading Power Versus Force. And his follow-up to it, if you're up to it, which uh, I had some about here as well, 
It's called the eye of the eye. And um, <clears throat> in there he talks about how we can calibrate virtually everything in our lives. Every book of the Bible has been calibrated. Uh, all of the great songs have been calibrated. Um, the calibration goes like this. Over here to my left is a calibration of zero. And as far as I can go on this stage, let's say up to the speaker, represents 1,000. The energy level of, of 1,000 to here. All right. Now, anything that goes up to number 200 on this scale that I'm just arbitrarily giving to you, let's say 200 is right here, represents something called force. And every thought and every emotion that you have that calibrates between 0 and 200 is a thought or an emotion that weakens you in one way or another and lowers the energy field. And those calibrations, those thoughts, I'll give you the, uh, the number 20 is the lowest and the thought is shame. And this, by the way, is a 29-year study that was conducted over uh, almost his entire professional lifetime. This is a medical doctor and a PhD researcher as well. And in this 30 years, these kinesthesiological tests that I just briefly uh, demonstrated with uh, Linda up here yesterday are ways that we can determine because, as I was trying to point out to you, the body comes from something that we call truth, perfection and it can only respond to truth. The moment that you introduce a lie into the body, the mind can fool, but the body, which is this perfect creation of God, only responds to that which is true. And so you can test virtually anything, even the lives of the greatest masters who ever walked among us, by asking questions of the body and watching how the body responds, forgetting about what the mind has to say about it. The body can only respond to truth. A number 20 is shame. At 30, we're moving up now. 30 is guilt. 50 is apathy, grief, fear, desire, anger, until we reach approximately 200. Now, every energy that is below 200 is an energy that when you have that thought, the thoughts of humiliation, of blame, of despair, of anxiety, of hatred, of scorn, any of these kinds of thoughts, these thoughts are in what he calls force. And whenever you use force as a way of communicating, a way of talking, a way of being, you create, the problem is that we create a counterforce. And that people who calibrate below 200 in their lives and anyone can be calibrated at any time even photographs can be calibrated the photograph on the cover of a spiritual solution to every problem calibrates around 580 and it was a picture that was taken in a cc after an, uh, just an astonishing miracle had happened in my life which i'll share a little bit with you uh, a little bit later and <clears throat> we have done seen experiments where they'll take a picture of a mother teresa and they'll take a picture of uh, a Charles Manson and they will put those photographs in envelopes that the person holding them doesn't know who is in the uh, envelope. And the picture of Charles Manson, who calibrates somewhere around 30 or 40, will make the person go weak. And they don't even know what picture that they're holding. You have to, it's almost like I said yesterday, you have to willingly suspend your disbelief. You have to do a somersault into the inconceivable and allow yourself to open up to the possibility that every thought that you have and every emotion that you have and every internal experience that you have has an impact not only on you, but as I'll demonstrate to you in a few moments, on everyone that you encounter in your life and everything that you encounter in your life and whatever energy field that you radiate to. So we're talking zero to 200, but this scale isn't a scale that is uh, consistent all the way through. When you get to a number of 600, which represents extremely high energy, you were talking about maybe a few thousand people on the entire 
planet Earth today, out of the six billion or so of us, who uh, reach this level of consciousness of 600. When we're talking about moving into seven and 800, we're talking about the greatest spiritual masters who've ever walked among us. People who live at the level of the ineffable, who are unconditional love, and have what Patanjali says, um, he said, when you become steadfast, in your abstention of thoughts of harm directed toward others. Listen to that again. When you become steadfast in your thoughts of harm directed toward others, all living creatures will cease to feel enmity in your presence. If you're steadfast in abstaining from a thought of harm and never ever have a thought of harm or judgment, directed toward others because you have to know that when you judge another you do not define them you define yourself as someone who needs to judge calling someone else stupid or foolish or evil or whatever does not make them that that just says something about you who needs to put those kind of labels on other people so that if you can become steadfast and become an individual who never but never has a thought of harm directed toward others or judgment which is almost impossible for all of us who live at these ego levels that we've been conditioned to live at. But if you can conceive of yourself as being someone like that, all living creatures will cease to feel enmity in your presence. St. Francis of Assisi is someone who calibrated in the 900s. Maybe seven or eight people in the history of the world have calibrated above 950. Francesco's, in fact, the city just to the north of us, about 40 miles, was named after this little man, St. Francis, who left his uh, worldly belongings behind and just took out to save, to save the church. And he spent the last two years of his life up in a place that I visited with my wife a few years ago when I uh, took a group of people to Assisi on Mount Suribasso. And the last two years of his life, he had to have his hands and his feet and his side bound so that he didn't bleed to death. Such was the energy level of this being. Hawkins suggests that any person who calibrates at 600 or higher, Mother Teresa calibrated at 600. When Mother Teresa walked into a radio studio where I was uh, on the radio that morning, everyone in the room felt her presence. She weighs about 90 pounds. It's about four foot ten. And she radiated out a different kind of an energy. And he suggests in Power Versus Force with his academic and research background that anyone who can raise their calibration level to the level of 600 or higher, everyone in that energy field is automatically healed. The disease cannot survive when you are around that kind of energy. They said of Jesus, his presence in the village and nothing more would raise the consciousness of those around him. He suggests that only one person in the history of humanity has ever reached this level of 1,000, and that was Jesus of Nazareth. And a few others in the 990s, 995 was Buddha. And these are all done with, um, with very scientific uh, kinesthesiological tests using the body, which can only determine that which is true.